Hey everybody, we're doing our series here of the 10 guns that everybody should own. We are going to start with the 1911 today. Uh, everybody should probably have one of these. You know, we, we with new gun owners and things like that, they, they don't really know, you know, what kinds of guns everybody should have. And you can always get into the, uh, the, the more eclectic guns or something different later on. But, you know, most people need to have a certain set of guns uh, that are sort of the base ones in the, in the closet or in the safe. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about. So follow along with us. Uh, make sure to watch each video. We're gonna we're gonna put a whole bunch of them out there. Uh, should be pretty cool. Uh, for some people, it's gonna be basic information. For other people, it's gonna be uh, fairly interesting. But you know, man, it's always fun to uh, to see something about all these guns again, even if you have them. So uh, watch and and uh, catch the other videos. America! Okay, so this video is about the 1911. This is one of the most iconic pistol designs in American history. This one is the midsize, uh, the commander size gun. Uh, they come in different lengths. They come in a five inch, uh, this kind of four inch and then a smaller three inch version and then the grip links will differ as well um so you know that that is also speaking in generalities there are other uh, uh variations of length so the basic features of a 1911 are it has a grip safety back here i'm gonna go ahead and show that this gun is safe for the safety police because we all love them uh, the basic features of the gun, there's a grip safety back here. It is a hammer-fired gun uh, as opposed to some of the other videos we've done on, on Glocks and things like that that are striker-fired. Uh, this gun is single action, meaning if you pull the trigger, uh, it will not drive the hammer back uh, and make it fire again. You do have to pull the hammer back. A lot of people carry this gun uh, in this position with the hammer back and the safety up. So, but there are tons and tons of variations of this. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way top to bottom and speak about some of the things that are available. Uh, I certainly do not expect that I am going to mention everything. We would love down in the comments for you to add some stuff or, or tell us if you see anything different or something I forgot. That would be really cool. Um, so starting at the top, uh, most of your 1911s are gonna be steel uh, uppers with uh, some kind of steel barrel. Uh, like I said, there are different barrel links. The, there are a couple different ways that they get disassembled. They get disassembled by, uh, in this case, there's a, you stick a little rod down in there. I don't, there you go. You can kind of see that hole. You can stick like a paper clip or something. It compresses that spring, uh, and then you bring the gun forward and take the slide off. I'm not going to take this gun apart on video. It's a, it's a little bit more difficult to pull apart. It's not hard to do, but it's just something that you got to get used to, and it's probably not uh, a good thing for me to try to do out here in the woods. Um, there, there's another variation on the way that these come apart where there is a, uh, a little uh, bushing in the front uh, that you, you rotate and it comes out. That's sort of the standard five inch version that's more typical. Um, this is a really good size of the gun. Uh, it's it's kind of in between. It's good for carry, and it's also uh, got enough barrel length to be pretty accurate. But uh, working your way down from the top, there are lots of variations on the way the sights are with this gun. These are uh, three-dot night sights that are on this gun right now. Uh, there are adjustable sights. There are standard Novak sights. Uh, all sorts of sights on this gun. This is this is probably the most common most accessorized gun that you could possibly buy maybe even more so than the glock 19. Um, there the safeties are uh, sometimes they're ambidextrous uh, sometimes they're standard there's a lot of ambi safeties out there for this thing a lot of aftermarket stuff there's every kind of grip you could possibly imagine for this thing um, 
all, all kinds of grip replacements, Ambi mag releases. There's just like everything you can think of that would go in here. There's all sorts of shapes of beaver tails and, and sizes. Uh, you can do tons of custom stuff. Again, with the triggers, uh, there are skeletonized triggers like these. There's solid triggers. There's every kind of trigger you can think of. A neat thing about this gun is that there's a lot of people that customize the triggers and that sort of thing. So you can get really beautiful triggers in these guns as well. Uh, so this particular gun is a Kimber. It's a Pro Carry 2. Uh, a lot of people like to trash Kimber guns. Uh, maybe it's because there for a little while they were using carbon steel in their guns instead of stainless and that kind of tended to rust a little bit more. I can tell you from experience, uh, dollar for dollar, they're really, really hard to beat. Uh, I don't consider them a high-end gun because most of them exist between about $700 and about $1,400. That's not to say you can't pay more for one, but I consider them to be a mid-range firearm. So you have the low-end guns. Uh, when I say low-end, I mean price-wise. I'm not talking about quality. Uh, you have have the low-end guns like the the Rock Islands uh, that are going to be some of the least expensive. I think ATI makes some guns. Then you you kind of step up to the next class that are the major producer guns, the Rugers and people like that. Uh, the Springfield Armory guns kind of start in that price range. So just to kind of discuss price ranges, you can get sometimes you can get a Rock Island as low as like 350 um, up to you know whatever you want to spend. The Rugers tend to exist in like that $600 price range, give or take a little bit. Uh, and the Springfield Armories fall into that class as well. They, they kind of start there, and then, of course, they go all the way up uh, as, as much as you want to spend on TRPs and things like that. Uh, and then I consider the Kimbers to fall into a mid-range between seven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. And then after that, you start moving into the more custom stuff, the, the Wilson Combats and the STIs. To me, STIs is one of the, the best-built guns out there, plus we're fans of Texas-built companies. Um, but me, I think bang for your buck, a lot of times the Kimber is the best gun. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that. We encourage your comments about that. Uh, but we're big fans of the Kimbers here. And we find that a lot of times the people that are making fun of the Kimbers or talking about how bad they are, uh, are pretty. Uh, it's pretty rare that they're actually Kimber owners. So, um, so that is just the generalities of the 1911. Uh, we covered probably why people should own it whenever we were talking about all the feature sets. All the features and the ubiquitousness of this gun uh, is is one of the main reasons. Uh, but also, you know, every holster company out there makes uh, something for a 1911. Uh, you know, it's in 45 most of the time, which is a really great caliber. I'm a big fan of the 45. Uh, you know, it's a, it's got a lot of, of horsepower and a lot of knockdown, uh, which is you know knockdown is is uh, sort of a term that that uh, people will will make fun of a little bit, but it, but it is a uh, it does have a lot of energy is the best way to say it versus knockdown, uh, and then you can also get these guns in nine millimeter, ten millimeter, thirty eight super. I mean they're in every caliber that you can think of. Twenty two conversion kits for these things, um, and then. Also, uh, generally speaking, they're very, very accurate guns. Uh, so all in all, uh, they're just a fantastic weapon. Everybody should have one of these things in their closet or their safe. Uh, and, and, you know, they're great guns. So that is why uh, everybody should have one. We're going to shoot one here in a second. Shoot this one in the midsize, and you can check out how it runs. So we're going to shoot our 1911. Check out how it shoots. This is the four inch gun. It's a little bit shorter barrel. The longer the barrel, typically the more accuracy you get. Uh, but generally these little guys are, they're, uh, they're usually pretty good shooters too. They run a 45 ACP. That's longer than some of the other videos uh, that you should go back and watch about uh, uh, our other top guns that people should have. A lot of those have been nine millimeters like the Glock 19 shield and stuff like that. Um, so go check those out. But uh, so we're gonna run this. We're gonna make some pina coladas there. I've got a coconut and a, uh, a pineapple and then something called a golden bliss. I have no idea what that is, but it, it looked cool at Walmart when I bought it. Um, and then we're gonna shoot a target and see how it runs. So first I'm gonna shoot my target and then we'll, uh, we'll make our pina colada slash golden bliss deliciousness there. Eight round magazine.
I'll pull that one a little bit. did pretty good. I was a little high and left. I think it might be me pulling some. All right. Let's go with our golden bliss first. Well, that's not that exciting. I don't even know what's inside that. We'll look and see. Let's try our pineapple. And the coconut. Ah, oh, that was more fun. Coconuts are cool. One more to the golden bliss. Oh, that was all eight rounds. All right. I don't even know what this is all about. Let's look and see. Safe. I don't even know what's in here. Let's... Smells like a cantaloupe. That's what that is. Maybe you guys can comment if you ever had one of these kind of seedy so this is going to be a fruit it smells like a breakfast fruit i thought it was going to end up being a squash or something but uh at any rate so there we go golden bliss fair amount of 45 damage hey it's got some uh it's got some of the coconut milk in it oh it smells just like a pina colada sort of but not really and uh so there's the uh 45 to the pineapple and we got some uh, some coconut there tastes like coconut yep so here's our group it was patterning pretty well grouping together pretty good that's eight rounds one two three four so there must have well there's five so we must have put two or three in that group together there so all in all, it shoots really well. Most of the rest of that stuff's probably me. But uh, anyway, so there we go. 1911 and pina coladas, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, So if you don't have a 1911, I would suggest going out and getting one. If it's your first one, maybe you want to get the 5-inch. That's the more classic, traditional style. And then they get smaller to carry and that sort of thing. I'm a big fan of these guns. They're great shooters. They're great quality guns. Might want to check out a Kimber. That's what uh, we sell a lot of, uh, is price point versus uh, uh, price point versus performance. You get a really good gun, uh, and of course, uh, there's tons and tons of other brands out there as well. They're all really good, good guns in most cases. So yeah, check us out. Uh, you know, we can always get in touch with us and get one, or go see your local gun guy, or or however you want to get it. But uh, at any rate, we appreciate you watching the video. Go get you a 1911. Y'all have a good one. Hey guys, it's Mr. Guns. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was cool, go ahead and like and subscribe. We should have a bunch of cool stuff coming in the future too. Uh, or follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you just want to get good gun deals or see what we got going on. The links will be in the descriptions below. So thanks for watching the video and we hope you'll follow us in the future.